for the Lord Jesus. A wonderful round of applause. My dear brethren, my dear friends, we are all here in the name of the Lord Jesus, in this name that is fully triumphant. Lately, I've been intensely experiencing this revelation the Lord Jesus gave, which says that whatever you ask in his name, that Jesus will do for us. And in Psalm 20, verse number 7, he says that we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, things created by man and natural things. But we will simply trust and rely on and remember the name of the Lord our God. And when we finally learn this, brethren, things really start to work out in a truly beautiful way, and it will work for you. For instance, in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter, Matthew chapter 17, verses number 19 and 20, the Lord Jesus had cast out the demon that was in a boy who had some seizures, some kind of epilepsy, and the disciples had failed. And they were truly amazed because they thought that they had learned everything. It's kind of like what happens to us. Sometimes we think we have already learned everything. And then we are sure to fail. But I really can't understand this. It looks as if God doesn't like me. It looks as if God is happy to see me suffer. No, we just didn't do the correct thing. We have to behave as instructed by the Word of God. It would be great if we dedicated more time, and I don't mean a lot of time, maybe five or ten minutes every day to read a section of the Bible, meditate, and pray. For instance, there's nothing better than every morning by the dawn that you come before the Lord God and call on the powers of God because the Bible says it's all there written in the Word of God that His compassions are new every morning and that he wakens us morning by morning, our spirit, so that we can become wiser. Therefore, let's say that until last night, I failed every compassion and mercy the Lord has on me. I painted the town red and did all kinds of things. But today, I have an opportunity to come before God and say, Lord, it's a new day today. And confess your sins to the Lord. Please forgive me for what I have done. I have done many wrong things in poor judgment. I did this and that mistake. But your compassions have become renewed this morning, and I want to take possession right now of all of them. My Lord, please use me in the name of Jesus. Take this away, and then I make my peace with God. Therefore, I'm okay before the eyes of the Lord. But if I do not do this, then there comes a problem. It's not that I'm committing a sin sometimes. It's that I'm not new in the compassions but I don't have his guidance or I fail to understand just as the disciples didn't what they were supposed to do so the boy could be healed. But Jesus delivered him. Jesus said, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you come out of him and enter no more. And it happened. Things looked so serious that they actually thought the boy was dead, that he had actually died. Jesus came to the boy, picked him up in his arms and handed him to his father. The boy had had those seizures since he was a little boy. Often he was thrown into the fire and the water to destroy him. And finally, the boy was healed. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 19, then the disciples came to Jesus privately. It wasn't something that happened before everyone. It was a private conversation, the, the kind you have with all the doors closed when you pray alone, as Jesus taught us, and said, why could we not cast it out? Please tell us, Jesus, because we don't understand. Whatever you taught us, we have learned it. We are masters here. Nevertheless, we failed. Let's see what Jesus answers in 1720. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, it's all because of your unbelief. We have as much faith as we need. If I don't have as much faith as I need to have my problems solved, God is responsible because he didn't give me what it takes. If you lend limited authority, let's say you have a company, you have a security leader, but that leader cannot act in full authority. But you're not responsible because if a robber comes in, then you can't say, well, I can take a few things from here. You didn't prevent that from happening. And so Jesus made it very clear for us. If the robber enters our company, we allowed it. We have as much faith as we need. But Jesus said, because of your belief, actually what he said was because of your unbelief, and here's the explanation. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith 
as a mustard seed. Someone taught it is as big as a mustard seed. He didn't say that. If you have faith as a mustard seed, or perhaps a rice seed or beans or wheat, what does it mean to have faith as a seed? You take the seed and you plant it in the ground in optimum growing conditions because if it's not the right time, the seed won't germinate. So growing conditions must be optimum. The seed understands it will eventually disappear, but it swells up, it explodes and germinates, and a plant is born from that mustard seed. And it will grow. That seed is one of the smallest seeds in the world, or the smallest. But when it grows, it produces a very tall tree to the extent the trees from heaven align with it. There are two separate things that can happen to that seed. To be planted in the ground, which is what God wants, that we use our faith with this purpose, so that we can produce on our own behalf or in someone else's. Or perhaps, if the seed doesn't go into the ground, it's used for cooking, which is also something very good. It will become some sort of spice, something very delicious, that will help you in your eating habits. But in this case, it's only used once. Here it will reproduce itself and grow thousands and thousands and thousands of seeds. So we must have this understanding, but I already have the faith. I have the word of the Creator. I have accepted Jesus. If you haven't accepted him, then do it now. Hurry up, be saved, because you are facing eternal damnation. This is something serious. If you come to pass away without being with the Lord, one billion years from now, you will still be lost and you will never be saved. Therefore, accept Jesus. When I first heard the word, I was six years old. I stood up, they asked, Brother, do you accept Jesus? I accept Jesus right now. I wanted it, I cried for it, I felt it in my heart and was saved. So what do you have to do? You have to admit that you believe. Then you receive the faith that you need. It says in the Bible that God gave each one of us the right proportion of faith. God looks at us, saw how much we need, how much faith you need, and gave it. Now I have to use this faith, but I shouldn't use a little of it. I have to use the right proportion of faith because of your unbelief. If you have faith as a mustard seed, brethren, what will happen then as a mustard seed? You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Mountain, move away from here. You are in the northern region, now move to the southern region of the city. But this is impossible. No, Jesus said so. It's not impossible. Someone can actually be used to do this someday. It could be you or me, but one day someone will do it. Jesus didn't say anything for the sake of it. Here, Jesus was talking about something extremely difficult, which is to make a mountain understand our language. I don't know what language the mountain speaks, but if a Chinese man gives the order, it will move. If they say it in Korean, it will move. Because it's not the word that we, that we hear, it's the faith inside it. Inside, uh, inside the word, mountain move from here to there, and it will happen. Jesus said it would happen. It's written here, and it will move. Therefore, if this eventually doesn't happen, then Jesus has to render accounts of his word, because otherwise he was lying. And it will move, and it goes further, and nothing will be impossible for you. Brethren, you have to make a decision in your life. Lord, until this day, I haven't been what you want me to be, but I will be from now on, and then God will make you happy. Amen? Now we shall open our Bibles to the Gospel of John chapter 5, verse number 24, and we are going to understand that salvation was a perfect action performed by God, and we must pay close attention to this. It's an action by someone who is perfect and complete. And if you've been saved already, then you can't live in unbelief. This means denying everything God did for you. John 5, 24. Jesus is speaking here. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. So Jesus lists two conditions here and three wonderful promises. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word, whoever hears my word, and believes in him who sent me, brethren. So we have to do two things. We have to hear the word of God. What does it mean to hear the word of God? I put my ear right here and I can't hear. I shake it, but the Bible doesn't talk. Only when God opens up your understanding, then you finally understand. And that's just like God speaking from the heavens directly to you. Then you will have the voice of God with you. Don't let that voice go. 
hold on to it. When you pray, the Lord is speaking to me. The Lord said it, this is mine. And this will help you, certainly this will boost your faith and your faith will increase. He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me. The Father sent Jesus and Jesus said what's correct. The Father loves me, he is my creator, and I need to have a relationship with him. There are three blessings here for this person according to the Lord Jesus. They have everlasting life. That's it, I now have the life that has never ceased existing, that exists now and that will never cease existing, which created everything. Now I am in communion with him. This is a process. But the person can experience all of these things every day and be transformed and completely changed, not by any religious doctrines, but through whatever God has been teaching through his word. Therefore, this person will have everlasting life. Now the second thing that happens, and shall not come into judgment. It's simple. It's just impossible for a person to come into judgment unless they are foolish enough to believe in the devil. Of course the devil will tempt them, show them someone who is really charming, show them something that is kind of wrong, but if you do it, you will profit from it. Don't do it because it comes from the demon. I mean, this person won't come into judgment anymore. It's just not possible for judgment to take possession or overwhelm you and convince you to do something that you know is wrong. Therefore, you have now conquered not only your free will, but also your total independence. You are no longer in the hands of the devil. And the third thing Jesus says here is, but has passed from death into life. Now you are no longer within the nature of Satan, who used to corrupt. Death is the nature of Satan. You're past that. You were there. I was there. We were all born there. But at the moment you wake up for the spiritual life that you believe in him who sent Jesus, then you have passed from death into life. And that's it. Now you are no longer influenced by the enemy in any way. But I did this. Next thing I knew, it was done. No, you have free will now from God. You have domain over yourself. Now you have the power to say, I don't do this, I don't accept this, and I will use the name of Jesus, I will remember the name of Jesus, and use his name with faith. In the name of Jesus, deaf and dumb spirit, just as Jesus said to that spirit, you spirit and you spirit, I'm binding you right now, and you will never be free again. I am delivered from your action, leave, and that's it. Your problem is solved forever. It's a real battle. Our battle is similar to the battle Israel fought in the old days so they could take over Canaan. God gave them that land. Everything belongs to God. For centuries, those people, they refused to serve the Lord God. They were very disobedient. They performed the worst actions of sorcery and witchcraft you can think of. They made this God called Moloch, who was made of metal. They passed it through the fire so that it became very shiny and so that they had abundant crops and they would make little children pass through the fire as a sacrifice to Moloch. And this was just horrible for God and they refused to change themselves, their, their, their attitudes. God decided to take their land away. The land is ours, but the enemies dwell on this land and who will hold on to this land and try to hinder our progress, but no. It's in the word, I am a warrior for God. I will remember the name of the Lord God. I will take possession of this land. This land will belong to me. I will receive this blessing. There is no such thing as me being weak or me being contaminated now and so on and so forth. Not now, I'm saved right now. And why is that? Because of this verse right here. He who hears my word, there are two specifications, and believes in him who sent me. Therefore, there's no need to pay for anything. It's all free. You have to do two things. You have to hear the word. It's all a process, as I said before. You pay attention to the word as God is speaking to you, and you begin to change. And you have to believe in this truly wonderful being, which is our creator, our father. And notwithstanding the church, all right, the church has nothing to do with this issue here. This is something else. Brethren, we are talking about your salvation here, about your spiritual independence, about your success in life. He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. That's it, brethren. Jesus could not be lying. God never lies to us. When you hear the word and believe in the Father who sent Jesus, you have everlasting life. It's all yours. This life now belongs to me. And then you will see what true happiness is. You will find the reason for being here in this world. You will discover that because 
Because of this, you are powerful in Christ Jesus. Without me, you can do nothing and shall not come into judgment. You can walk free as a bird. You can be among the worst and forever lost souls. I shall not come into judgment. I will take these people away. Now I am no longer involved in this evil scheme. I refuse to allow evil uh, to enter my heart. It is said that in the beginning of the last century, that is 1900 and something, a bubonic plague in South Africa was causing the death of many thousands of people. No one wanted to go there. England sent a ship there that, that wouldn't anchor there. The ship just went up and down the coast, and the doctors took a small boat to the country in extreme fear of being exposed. And they found a preacher. I think his name was uh, João Lago, João Leite. And this preacher was helping the dying people. He carried them around, you know, and buried the dead with his own hands. And the doctor said to him, are you crazy? Crazy? Why? There are lots of bacteria. This is a very serious plague, but that's okay. I follow a different law in my heart. Man, stop doing that. You will get contaminated eventually. And he said, find anyone who has just died and get some of their saliva and put it on my hand. Now look under the microscope and they could see all the living bacteria dying. But what is this? This is what you needed to know. It's what I needed. Romans 8, 2. Brethren, we have great power. We have to use that power. The doctors were truly amazed with our brother there. For the law of the Spirit, Spirit is in capital letters, it's the Holy Spirit, of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Brethren, you shall not come into judgment, but this is, why could we not cast it out? Because of your unbelief, you have not used enough faith to do the work. We cannot do that. We have the capacity to do it. The mustard seed, that seed uses its full capacity. It explodes and becomes a growing plant. I mean, it gives origin to that plant that will produce thousands of other seeds that are just like it, or even millions of seeds, unless man destroys the plant or fails to take care of it. You have no idea of the potential you have with Christ when you hear the word of God. You shall not come into judgment. Oh God, what am I going to do on the day of judgment? I'm going to come with my head up. And why is that? Because I have everlasting life and I shall not come into judgment. Because my sins were judged in Jesus Christ. I am in Jesus. The life I live now as I live it in Jesus. And the evil can no longer destroy this. And finally, Jesus said, but has passed from death into life. I am no longer there. I left there. There is an empty place there which was mine. I am now taking my position in Jesus Christ. I will never go back there because anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the laws of sin and of death. The bacteria all died there under the microscope and they said, let's go to work and help these people because someone really needed to help them. Don't be afraid or apprehensive, brethren. Listen, if your faith is causing you to be doubtful and if you don't enjoy, if you don't enjoy the full assurance of your faith, you need to seek the Lord God. These are the things that you need to target. Lord, I need that. I need to be a person who will enjoy the full assurance of my faith. I cannot hesitate right now. I cannot stumble. What if this is not for me? If God revealed it to me, then it's for me. I feel it in my heart. I'm coming after this blessing and I will be this person in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Joshua and Caleb were steady before the Lord God, uh, in the old days when the 12 spies came back with bad news, Joshua and Caleb were steady. And God said to Joshua, now Caleb will inherit Hebron. And Caleb held on to that word. And then Joshua started to divide the land. Joshua looked at Caleb, and Caleb knew that Joshua hesitated. Joshua, I inherited Hebron. You know that God gave this land. Moses talked to you about this. But Caleb probably tried to argue. You're 85 years old. Giants dwell there. Hey, Joshua, just as my strength was then, so now my strength for war is now. But you're too old, brother. My dear friend, faith is all about spirit. Faith never gets old. It's the spiritual side. Just as my faith, just as my strength was then, it is now. And Caleb inherited Hebron, and he drove the giants out, the Anakim, and took possession of the land, for that land has always belonged to him and his family. This is what the Word of God says. Remember that, let's, let's go back to John 5, 24. He who hears my word and believes in him 
who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Brethren, this has to happen with us. We have to take possession because it has already happened. It's ours. It's the Lord God's gift to every human being, regardless of their religion, where they were born, and what they do. We all have the right to this blessing. Now let's watch the real life drama segment for today. Well, I felt too much pain in my, my leg, my right leg, you know. But I mean, I would spend the 24 hours of the day in pain. To clean the house, I would have to sit down on a plastic chair and drag it around. I couldn't clean things. I couldn't do anything. And so I was forced to quit my job. Maria feels in her heart the calling to become a sponsor. So I was watching the show and Dr. Swire said that and I thought, but how can I afford to be a sponsor? I just quit my job <laughs> after 13 years at that job. Maria is financially blessed, but she still endures great pain. I'm selling cakes from home. I'm just starting a business from my own house. I bake cakes, I make snacks, I sell frozen food. And the sponsorship, well, I started with a small amount, but in the future, I'm going to increase that as my sales increase. The other day, while watching the Faith Show, my daughter-in-law, the poor old thing, she used to be sitting all the time. She couldn't barely do anything because of that pain, you know? She felt too much pain, too much pain. She cried in pain. Some days, she just would lie in bed so that she could go to the church up the street. They would have to pick her up at home so that she could go there with a cane on her hand to give her support. And then at night I had this dream that I was, I was at a very, very low place. And there were many angels. And the angels started to pray, you know, in a circle. Then I tried to enter that place lying down and I entered that place. I didn't feel any pain. When I entered, I didn't feel any pain. They were praying and interceding. It was great. The other day, while watching the faith show, in the evening, when Dr. Swati started to preach, he told the story about Jacob and the angel. I saw on television that Dr. Swati would come here on the 9th. I got up at four in the morning. I took a shower and I said, well, I'm going there. And Dr. Swati came spreading the word and so on, all those blessings. And when he prayed, I felt as, 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 as if someone had pulled my leg. It was like throwing some cold water on the fire. It was all over. For two years, I could barely walk. I couldn't even leave home. And this is your companion? Yes. And show us what it was like when you were walking. I walked with a limp in great pain. For two years? Yes, two years. Jesus is beautiful, right? Now walk around by yourself. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. When I got home, I didn't have to lie down after lunch. I came home and started to clean my things. She's much better. She smiles. Jesus healed my grandmother. When I got home, I was so happy that I started to jump rope with my granddaughter. I even did somersaults. I laughed. I jumped. I would jump in the kitchen all the time, you know. My granddaughter laughed so much she fell on the ground. That's really beautiful, brethren. Do you see how God works things? It's not out of the blue, brethren. We have to listen to the voice of God. He who hears my word and listens, it will talk to you. Believe in him and you will receive three blessings. You will have everlasting life and not come into judgment. And finally, they have passed from death into life. There is no longer a reason for you not to be blessed. You have to listen to God. Now let's go to the question and answer segment. Dr. Suides, does the pastor call come from God or is it a human desire? No, no one can become a minister unless they hear the calling. First, we are called to be Christians. Afterwards comes the calling to be a minister. The calling to be a minister is very important. And why is that, Dr. Suarez? Because you're not doing it for your own sake. 
you know that God puts you there. There are more and more being trained. I remember that on April 13, 1975, I was consecrated as a minister. I was trembling. I fasted for 24 hours before that. I said, Lord, as of today, life is over for me because now I'll become a minister of the gospel. If there's peace in our country, amen to that. If there's confusion and persecution, amen. I will give my own life away. <laughs> but this is something very serious. You have to be aware. I was trembling, but I want this. And when he poured that oil on my head and I felt the drops, I was completely shaking. I said, Lord, thank you. You have delivered on your word. And many millions of people have been blessed with the same calling. This is the ministry. Let's, uh, let's go to the second question. Being holy means living in isolation. Isolated from sin is what it is. Being holy means living among others and not getting contaminated. Jesus, is there anyone who can be holier than the Lord Jesus? No, Jesus is holy. He's truly a saint, 100% holy. And he lived among sinners. He lived uh, with people pointing fingers at him. Oh, but he lives among sinners. Jesus brought them to see the light. However, having communion with a sinner is more difficult for anyone who wishes to be holy because communion is a relationship. But we shall become friends. We shall give them the right word, especially when they come to us or when God commands us to go to them. Let me say a prayer for those who are at home and we will pray together next, but this prayer is also for you. God, I thank you, Father, because we really needed this blessing to be remembering your holy name. And that's all, God. And Lord, to listen to your word and believe in the one who sent us Jesus, which is you. Therefore, we will have three blessings, everlasting life, we shall not come into judgment, and my dear Lord, we are simply leaving the kingdom of darkness and entering into the kingdom of God. I now join my faith with the faith of all those people who are praying, and I command this evil spirit to leave. In the name of Jesus, be delivered for the glory of God, and amen.